Welcome inside another edition of Ground Rules, the Georgia Tech baseball podcast. We've got a couple of special guests joining us after a, a big series sweep over Gardner Webb this weekend. Chandler Simpson, shortstop for the Jackets, and Marquise Grissom Jr., uh, pitcher for the Yellow Jackets. And guys, first and foremost, let's just take a quick stock of the season so far. Undefeated at home, that one loss uh, last week in the midweek. Chandler, what are your thoughts on how the team's been this year? Uh, I feel like the uh, team's been good. Uh, we're rolling right now. Um, I feel like everybody's comfortable where they're at, and uh, we're um, we're coming together good on the offensive side, and and we're getting all the knickknacks figured out. What we're not good at, what we're good at, strong suits, weak suits. So uh, I feel like it's been good so far, but I feel like this weekend is going to be the first test. And Marquise, what do you think? We saw some pretty good pitching this weekend, especially at a chance and Maxi. Yeah, um, that was that was most of the struggles. You know, last year we actually had a lot of struggles pitching, but I feel like we're improving. I feel like we're coming together more as a team, even with like chemistry, matureness, and all that. So yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a really big year for us. All right, and now you guys got to tell me about what we have sitting in front of you. That's that's the lizard head. Where did that start, and and what do you got on that? Well, it came from Cole McNamee, who's uh, also a two-way on the team as well. Uh, he just brought it up to us, and it's just something like to help us, just to keep us going. It's the home run celebration. Somebody hit a home run, come back to the dugout, put it on. So just something just to keep us going throughout the season. So we just took it and ran with it. And Marquise, be honest with me, okay? This is ground rules. This is this is this is authentic, real. Did you think Chandler Simpson was going to wear that this year? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, I, I mean, I, I thought, I thought, I thought it was gonna be like later in the season, you know, curveball. He can get it out low and in. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, uh, that was that was amazing to see though. Yeah, well, Chad, that might have been the highlight of the weekend. With all due respect to John Geisler, who also had his first home run put on the lizard head. But Chandler, you had the grand slam on Friday. And I know we've talked about it a little bit over the past couple of days, but just again, when it left your bat. What were your thoughts? Did you think it was gone? I thought it was gone off the bat. So I'm looking at him jogging, you know what I'm saying? I kind of pimped it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had to keep running. But uh, I saw I saw it coming down. I see the uh, right fielder getting close to it. He jumped up, and I'm like, oh, man, he finna catch it. <laughs> then he went over the wall, and I looked at the umpire. He gave the signal for the home run. I'm like, oh, my God, it's crazy. So, and, yeah. And that was your first, I mean, first college home run. We know that, but that was your first – Lifetime Grand Slam. Yeah, yeah, first lifetime Grand Slam for sure. Wow, what a memory. Yeah, what a memory. Definitely. Uh Marquise, what did you think? You think it was gone? Yeah, I mean, at first at first I was in the bullpen warming up. So um I uh I looked up and I was looking at the ball and then I had no idea who hit it. And then I turned around and I seen Chandler running around the bases. I, I was like, I just put my hands on my head. I was like, <laughs> that is crazy. Like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, well, he's got, he's got some juice for sure, and everybody knows it now. And 10 different players have already homered in the first eight games. Chandler, when it comes to this offense, have you ever been a part of something like this? I haven't. I haven't been a part of something that's like, it's no, it's no loopholes in it. Like you're going to have to come face us one through nine. There's no breaks. There's no taking off. You're going to have to come at everybody with your best stuff because everybody can um, make a difference throughout the game. And, you know, it's just it's just amazing. It's a blessing to have everybody one through nine that can just get started up so everybody can start up some. And Marquise, I know as a staff, you guys are relieved to be in season and not having to face these guys every day in practice, right? Yeah, that's that's the good part, you know, because it's facing them in the fall and spring. You see where like where you really are, and mm -hmm. like you, it's almost like you won't face you face you barely face lineups like that. So when you just face them and you see where you're working with, then you can know where you can pitch, where you can dominate, and stuff like that. Well, I, I want to shift to kind of a, a, a bigger topic about each of your journeys to Georgia Tech, because I think a lot of fans, you just there's Chandler Simpson playing shortstop for the Jackets and. That's great, but I don't really know where where he came from, what it, what his life story has been. So, so Chan, I want to start with you. You're from Atlanta, went to high school here, went to UAB uh, for a couple of years, and came back here. It, it, did you ever envision yourself having a chance to play here in your home city? No, nah, not at all. Like if you would have told me this even earlier, early 2021, I wouldn't have thought that I'd have been here. I thought I'd been back at UAB, but. 
uh, I'm just blessed how things turned out and I'm grateful for it. And I'm just trying to make the most out of the opportunity. And now tell me about that decision when you told your parents who are both uh, educators, your mother's the principal at St. Pius, your dad worked at DeKalb County for close to three decades in the school system, now at Clayton County. What was their reaction when you said, hey, I'm gonna come play at Georgia Tech? Uh, they was amazed, they were <laughs> jumping up the walls, man. They was happy to have me back home. Uh, just hometown kid, grew up um, homegrown. So uh, they was definitely very excited, happy. And now are you, you're living with them for this semester? Yes, I am. Is that pretty sweet, getting your laundry done and home-cooked meals? And uh, those well, things? I got to do my own laundry. What? But yeah. Oh, <laughs> but come on, mom the home dad. Cook, the home-cooked yeah. meals definitely <laughs> help out. I definitely save a lot of money staying okay. at home. So. What about you, Marquise? I mean, you're obviously from here as well and have a chance to play here in Atlanta. I, I've heard this story, but you got to tell the fans, why did you want to come to Georgia Tech? Well, the first reason, the first reason I love Atlanta. Like, I've always been here most of my life. I was born in L.A., and then I moved to Atlanta around four or five when my dad wanted to come home after he retired. And he, he grew up here all his life, so that's all I really know. So it's like um, when it came to a decision, I was just like, well, they got a good baseball program, get a good degree, and in a big city, I like big cities, so I was just like, Atlanta fills all those boxes and Georgia Tech was in my selection, so. Did you talk to anybody else getting their input, you know, whether it be, you know, friends of your father or, or other mentors? Yeah, definitely. Like um, really like pitching coaches I had in high school, family, family was a big one. They didn't think I they was worried about the education, how much I would lock in on my schoolwork. <laughs> but um, yeah, just really family and friends. Just see when I told them my top three, it was almost like, all right, it clicked and we made it good decision for everybody no i don't i don't want to name drop here necessarily i know you're conscious of that with your father winning a world series in the show and, and all of that but am i wrong hank aaron kind of gave you some encouragement as well oh yeah yeah he um yeah he, he gave me the most encouragement actually he just um yeah he was like hey there's nothing better than atlanta nothing better than playing in atlanta so when he said that i committed the next day so yeah, yeah so um <laughs> Yeah, it's, just, it's great to know him as a person because he was always a great person to mm -hmm. everybody that you know. So Yeah, I think uh, Georgia Tech, uh, not that the whole city doesn't have a lot to thank Hank for, but I know uh, uh, obviously Tech fans are grateful you decided to come here and, and very proud to have two guys from Atlanta uh, representing the school. And let's talk about Atlanta, too. You guys are both from the south side, and I, and I know – you know, there's, you know, East Cobb, Alpharetta, you know, there's a lot of baseball talent up there. But on the south side, particularly in the black community, there's some pretty good players right now, including, you know, there's a good chance there, there's two high school African-American uh, African African outfitters who might be top two or three picks in the draft coming up. What, what does black baseball in Atlanta mean to you guys? Uh, I think it means that um, we're very gritty. Uh, we come from hard work. Um, we're together, um, we come from like dedication and really just taking the opportunity that's granted to us, um, when it's granted to us, cause maybe not a lot of them will come, but when they do, when it presents itself, then we gotta take full advantage of it. What about you Marquise? Well, yeah, just um, my dad, he wanted to give back to the community. So that's what he mainly, on the South side, he just tried to help anybody that was didn't have the expenses or stuff like that. Didn't have the like gloves, bats. He would always give those to them. But then like playing with those guys growing up, like I usually, like my dad usually always had an all black team mm -hmm. or I mean, mostly so yeah. And we always had like pretty good talent, D1 schools and commitments and all that. But yeah, just really growing up meeting it in Atlanta, being a black baseball player, it was just like a group of us and we stayed together because we all wanted that same goal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when, when it comes to, to playing for Georgia Tech, particularly this weekend, we can talk about Georgia Tech versus Georgia. What's going to mean for you guys to take the field in, in the rivalry series in the state center stage and, and have a chance to see some black players out there, some black kids in the stands? Uh, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel good um, that we can be like role models to uh, kids in the stands that uh, it's black players playing baseball out here, D1, Power 5. And if we could set an example and encourage them to get more black players in baseball, um, because we are a 
a real minority in the sport. And it's gonna feel good to be a part of it. It's gonna be my first time part of the rivalry, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Well, we can't wait to see you guys in action this weekend. Let, all right, let's go off the field now a little bit. Tell me about ping pong, because my understanding is it's infiltrated the clubhouse, and there's some pretty heated battles, not just on the field, but in the in the locker room. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah, they put the ping pong table in there about like maybe the day of opening day or the day before, <laughs> and this has been because we used to play cars in there. Okay. We used to play cars. Uh, we played a game called P's and A's. But um, since the ping pong table has been in there, it's really taken over. And um, I know I've definitely been on it, trying to get better <laughs> uh, versus all the competition, big competition in there. So. So who who runs the table? I what see you got, Tres. 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 Jink. Sammy okay. Crawford. Yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Okay. What about you, Griff? You play at all? Well, I, I didn't start. I didn't play as much. I haven't played in years until it got in here. And now so you're in. Now, now I'm working, trying to get better because they seem like they've been playing all their life. So <laughs> <laughs> I got to I gotta get better at that. But I'm, I'm learning, though. Oh, so. 100%. 100%. So as far as being on campus, Chandler, I know it's your first year here. What, what else have you gotten involved in beyond Georgia Tech baseball? Uh, beyond baseball, I just uh, recently – uh, at the beginning of the year, joining the fraternity, prestigious Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And uh, it's something that I hold near and dear to me. Uh, I really cherish the brotherhood and connections that you can make throughout it and the service that we do for the community. Um, I got dads and uncles. I basically grew up within the fraternity. That's also a, a part of it as well. And they've put on an example and been a big role model for me. And I exemplify the principles of the fraternity and how I live my life and how to be an Omega man. And I feel like there was something that I had to be a part of and I wanted to carry on, uh, not only for my dad, but for my future kids as well. Yeah, t tell me about your dad too. I mean, again, he's a lifelong educator and I know he's excited to see A at Georgia Tech, B back in Atlanta, I'm sure at home as well, but C having a chance to kind of, you know, basically show him all the investment he put into you and, and give him a good return. Yeah, my dad has been the biggest influence on my life. Uh, he will forever be the biggest influence on my life. He's been there through everything, all the ups and downs. He's like a dad, but he's also like my big brother because he's going to tell me what it is. He's not going to sugarcoat anything for me. Um, he's always been there for me, man. And um, I just feel like, um, I feel like, I feel like it's a blessing to have him as a dad and then to be able to um, show him everything that he put into me that, that come to the light, you know what I'm saying? So just to, for him to see everything, I, I feel like just to see the smile on his face and him get rowdy when I do something <laughs> on the field, I feel like that just uh, warms my heart and allows me to keep going. Did you look for him after the Grand Slam? I did, I did look yeah, you see him? Yeah, I see him. I saw him. He was the first person I looked at when I saw him. He was right above me, and I saw I seen him screaming and cheering for him. So yeah, I that made me happy. That's awesome. That's sure. awesome. Was he much? Did he play any baseball growing up? He didn't. He played like maybe middle school, but okay. I'm really like the first like college athlete. Oh no, kidding! Okay. First gen, so. All right, I'm gonna ask the question, and the answer might be easy. In his prime, in your prime, who's faster? Oh, he he could be for a long he could be me for a long time. Really? But uh, I say like when I got to high school, it was over with. It was so, over. But now it's it's crazy. Yeah, nah, it's did you did you run track in high school? I didn't. I Are didn't. you serious? Yeah, no, nah, it's just God given. I'm t that the track coach at your high school got oh, yeah, beat down your door, me. right? Yeah, they definitely wanted me for <laughs> track season during baseball season. Uh, you no, know, okay, so yeah. you know, I couldn't do that. But I wanted to. I wanted to run track, but. No, I couldn't do it because of baseball season. Okay, I got you. All right, Marquise, I'll, slightly different question. Who who had a better arm, you or your dad? Like, did he ever pitch in college? Yeah, my, my dad got drafted as a pitcher. No kid, I didn't know that. Yeah, so um, he said he said he was ninety seven in high school, and just dominating. And I I never even knew that. I seen some of his stats and they were crazy. So okay, right now right now he probably has me beat right now, but um. <laughs> We're working, we get in there, you know, so. Well, do you, do you believe he was throwing 97 or is he just, he's just telling you that? I mean, from what I heard, some of his friends, they said he was they like the best up? athlete I've ever seen in my really? life. Really? So. Okay. And and he got the nickname Grip, right? At, as a, in high school, right? Uh, yeah. So do you go by, I've called you Grip. Do you prefer Grip yeah. or Lil Grip? Yeah, I'm Lil Grip. Lil Grip, yeah, okay. So I think, all right, my I don't, apologies. I don't, know the reason, I, don't, I don't know the reason why they call him Grip. I think it was something because like, Something about gripping a, a like football or something because he was a quarterback too. Yeah. So 
you know, something like that. But so everybody, all his friends and stuff, they called me Little Grip. So yeah, that was that was my understanding was that it was quarterback, point guard. I mean, it just yeah, ball was in his hands. <laughs> ball was in his hands. That was yeah. the deal. How long have you guys known each other? Probably, probably around twelve years. Yeah, yeah. eight no or nine. Kidding. Yeah. What was your first impression when you met Marquise? Like eight, nine year old Marquise. Yeah. Man, I just really was like, oh man, this Marquis Grissom's son. <laughs> <laughs> like, this really his son. That's crazy. And then got to know him, play together, and then we like brothers now. Okay. What about you, Grip? Little it Grip. Was, it, man, he's he's been that fast since we were <laughs> yeah. that young. Like, I remember I remember like we played on like a like a real good team. Everybody hit bombs and then he'll just bunt out of nowhere. 10-0, it didn't matter. He'll just bunt and beat beat everything out. So I was like, man, this dude is crazy fast, man. Did you guys ever face each other? I mean, I go to the same team usually. Uh, maybe like travel ball, yeah. like MGBA, because I play with Georgia Bombers. He okay. plays MGBA, stuff like that. So yeah, travel ball. Okay, he ever, did he ever bun on you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I I, I tell him not to. You know what I'm <laughs> even even the inter squads in the fall and the spring, I was like, please don't, because. <laughs> I, he I look like bad. Yeah, I, and like, he athletic too, so I can't really bun on okay, him. He athletic bitches. Okay, so I can't. okay, I got you. All right, I got you. All right. Uh, what do you guys? So rest of the season, we got Georgia coming this weekend. Or that's circled. What are some other series you're all looking forward to? Uh, I say really the all the ACC series. Um, mm -hmm. Since it's my first time in the ACC Power Five, uh, I'm just excited to see what the competition is like. How um, match up against it. So I'm just looking forward to all of them, really, and okay. carry it on to the uh, postseason. Okay. Have you have you looked at any of the school records, by the way? Stolen bases, run school? I have looked at uh, the stolen base one for single season. It was 50. I always look at Ty Griffin. He's on the yeah. wall in there. And I see he stole 50 his uh, freshman year. So, yeah, I looked at that. I think you got a shot at that, obviously, and at the run scored thing, too, with the way you get on and the way we hit, man. <laughs> yeah. Are there any players you look up at the wall who you're yeah, like, um, like who look, are you trying to chase? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I see Connor, Tom, uh, Connor Thomas the walk for nine. Yeah, That's, that was crazy. So I've been I've been chasing that a lot. So just because you, you throw strikes, you can get outs. So and, and, and I want to get into that too because I was going through your numbers. I think it was yesterday, and and again, this is through eight games, but you haven't walked anybody yet. Knock on wood. You can get mad at me. Uh, I, 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 didn't, that. I didn't even know that. So. Oh, that's all, all right, that's on me, folks. I'm it's sorry. All, it's all, it's was that a real focus for you? I mean, off season. Yeah, it's just, um, yeah. It's like I talked to some people. It was on my last year. Just like I wasn't really satisfied with like the walks per nine and stuff like that. Just just improving, throwing my strikes, getting the first pitch strikes and stuff like that. Because you're more effective when you throw strikes, so. All right, and uh, the last question I got for you, Chandler, is it true Colin Hall said he was coming for you in the stolen base category? He did say that, he did say that, but it was another player in the fall that said it as well, and then after a week or two, it, that kind of faded away. So, really? Uh, we're gonna see, it's a it's a good competition. I like, I like where his head at, and I like the confidence <laughs> and everything. As far as stolen bases go, mm -hmm. do you feel like you're helping out Kevin Parada a little bit. He's picked up like three with you stealing third, and he goes <laughs> to second. He kind of owes you for that, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I mean, you mean helped him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm saying like you're oh, taking. Oh, he behind yeah. me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I help him out a little bit. Uh, he tell he tells me uh, like, man, I got three bags because of you. I'm like, man, I'm scoring runs because of you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's a mutually beneficial yeah, it's, relationship. Oh, it's definitely yeah. a good one too. Uh, uh, it's comfortable having like behind me. I, I feel like whenever I get on and he behind me, I'm. It's a big percentage. I'm a touch home plate, and that's all we want to do to get wins. So. Mm -hmm. How do you like throwing to him, Grip? With Jelly. Well, Parada. Oh, Parada. <laughs> so luckily, every time I would throw, he would catch me. Okay. So I, I only face him like twice, and okay. it's just like he knows what I throw. He's fa he sees me all the time, so it's like. You got to be precise. You, one yeah. mess. Oh, up. you're talking about him as a hitter. Yeah. I meant working with him as your catcher. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't. Nobody wants to pitch to him. Yeah, I catcher, know that. Catcher, we, uh, yeah, we, um, we're good. We're good yeah. together. Like we just made that partnership even before college. Like he was mostly when we was going to that like travel ball, summer ball circuit. Um, he was really the only dude from Georgia Tech I've seen a lot, and he actually was on my team at like those circuit teams. So. We actually made came together, and we was gonna come to he, come here and try to take over. Before we let y'all out of here, 
your ticket out. You got to do an impression of a coach on staff. It can be Debo, Ramsey, Coach Hall, <laughs> Nick Askew. What do you guys got? Okay, I'll do. I'll do Q right quick. Okay. <clears throat> Look, guys. Uh, like you can't just have the pitch in one spot. Like you got. You know how to change the change the gears on the machine. Like it's not helpful if you just if the one pitch is down the middle. You have to be adaptable. Adaptable. That's the <laughs> word, right? That's all I hear from Q. All right. What, what do you What do you got, little grip? Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Debo. Okay. Um, just every every um before we pitch and stuff, he's just like, Hey y'all, we're good. We're in a good situation. As long as we throw our pitches with conviction, we're gonna get first, get the first pitch strikes and give away no free bases. We're gonna we're gonna be lead the ACC and we're gonna be a good team. And that sounds like a plan to me, man. <laughs> good deal. Well, guys, thanks so much for taking the time. I know your time is precious in season, but I promise you, Tech fans and and me in particular, really appreciate y'all finding the time. Oh, thank you. Anytime. All right, Georgia Tech in Georgia, clean old fashioned hate this weekend, Friday night at Russ Chandler Stadium, McNeese Baseball Park. Hope to see you guys there. I promise they're gonna put on a show. <laughs>